Bob Weigel of insane, do I mean, of sound doctrine. Ah, oh, I tell you, this this thing right here, this, yeah, I should have known, okay? Should have known. You can see the front panel has its share of rust. Back panel, quite a bit. There, I've scraped it down. These are just such a cool machine, though. Can you let one of these just die? I don't know. I don't think so. We had problems with, uh, well, the LM326 regulator in the power supply blew out eventually. Um, can't remember when that happened. One side blew, then I shorted, dragged a probe across something and hit a ground and forgot to unground my scope and it <laughs> blew the other side. So anyway, yeah, <clears throat> let me just take you through the guts of this. This is so poorly documented. This machine, I had to do so many changes. It, well, additions of things. Mostly the schematics were pretty accurate, but they were um, lacking in, they like put uh, TA on one page and TA neg, and they don't say where it goes, and TA neg, is that the same thing? Well, it is, but they don't tell you that. Eh, anyway, let's look inside what we got here. Polysynth board is underneath. Okay, this is under the keyboard. We got a dual bus keyboard. It's got two springs per key and two wires per key and one set of wires comes off of course to this board which has an oscillator with a voltage control circuit over here that is the original um, DCO design, the original digital controlled oscillator which is actually analog controlled because it's a um, it's simply charging up a capacitor resistor network and charging and discharging through this, this uh, one-shot chip here, this LS221 chip, and then it's driving a logic uh, network here that decides which waveforms, these are the from the waveform switch, these wires here. Uh, going across here you've got an added capacitor in an attempt to remove a mystery phantom signal which is still popping some. That's the only problem still with this. I I just, I'm worn out on it. I'm going to let it go for now. <laughs> If I turn the LFO down here up too high, it pops. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, uh, that's supposed to be a tuning pod. It wasn't tuning at first because this chip was bad. Half of it was bad, I guess. And um, <clears throat> the tune pots up in there, it was uh, messed up, too. This had a broken spring, the bender pot. I still need to make a real spring for it. I Mickey Mouse one, and it kind of makes noise when you turn it, so eventually I'll make a nice one for it. But, um, man, what a total. Anyway, the uh, divide down network here using the uh, 4727 chip, I guess it is, yeah. And um, it's like an SAJ110, I think. And then this is your noise source over here. That's the noise circuit for the white and pink noise. And so uh, out of there we go, I guess. Anything else I wanted to mention down there? I don't know but the polysynth part, that's where that's all generated. Now, the polysynth comes into this capacitor right here. This is the noise mix. That's from the noise source and this was well, from the noise knob, um, the level of, of the noise on the front panel comes into there, I guess, because it turns up and down when you turn the noise up. And these are uh, DCO1, DCO2, this is an auxiliary. You could, it doesn't hook to anything. You could take that to an external jack if you wanted for an immediate modification on this thing to have an external input come into your filter. This is your voltage control filter with these four chips here. Those are 3080 or OTAs, uh, operational transconductance amplifiers. Similar design to probably Korg Delta, some things that use that type of design with a couple of uh, dual OTAs in its case that are the same. And I retroed in a pot there because the other one was ganky and I didn't have another uh, 5K pot or 500 ohm pot. This is the um, <coughs> quad op amp that uh, does the function of uh, uh, mixing the voltages from the control sources and uh, into the, the resistors that drive the legs of the OTAs. That's a transistor pair that I also replaced and didn't need to probably. It actually had bad resistors. These a couple of these resistors were noisy and just, oh man, unbelievable how many bad solder joints and <laughs> stuff. This curious uh, thing over here is actually your delay generator and then a couple of um, OTA circuits, one for each 
uh, VCA circuits, one for each um, of the uh, two low frequency oscillators, and so this allows the LFO to gradually emerge. They come in here and come out a couple other wires. Uh, anyway, <coughs> okay, so um, now where do the signals get? Oh, well, let's do this stuff first here. Uh, that's your LFOs back there, and a card that is just an interconnect going into it. The LFO 1 and 2 circuits and the 4724 for the stair step and uh, and random uh, sample and hold kind of thing are there. This is the um, interface to the card that generates the oscillations, uh, the uh, waveforms under there. It takes the high frequency signals which come in. Let me see. I almost know everything about this thing. I think they come in that wire and <laughs> that wire. You should see a high frequency signal on there coming in from the uh, card over here. So I'll explain in a second. Uh, but um, these do the logic functions for uh, uh, which waveforms are being selected and so on as I remember. And then down on the board there we've got the actual wave uh, shaping circuitry and um, it you know steps the waves, adds them logically uh, let's see, to create different waveforms, uh, approximations of waveforms. Anyway, uh, over here, this is kind of just a bridge card here with some extra power supply caps on it. This is where the waveforms are actually generated. you got your tuning pots down there. The P435 board, I believe, there. 434 board pair there. And 43, that's the DAC board. And that's the... Um, that is the uh, key coder, and this one actually is the one that receives uh, the uh, interface there from the key bus for the monosynth part. So this one uh, decides which keys have been hit and uh, preconditions the signals and all that. So if you have a problem with just a missing note or something, it may be somewhere in the interface between there and here. If you have random notes, it's this one. If they're out of sequence and that kind of thing, <laughs> or you can get missing blocks of notes. Anyway, uh, there also there's um, I've added to my documentation the fact that there is a uh, wire here. This orange one comes actually from this uh, key switch, and it it goes under and down to a um, op amp, which was bad, half bad, uh, 348 quad op amp on. Um, it's on the DAC board, I can't even remember, I think it is. Think of what it does here, but yeah, that would uh, probably be on there, I think. Anyway, um, I look that up, but oh man, my brain is fried from just <laughs> too many problems with it. Uh, on the DAC board also is, um, is the glide, and yeah, the, the glide and that are in common. The, neither function worked because of that op amp being bad. And um, it just uh, has a, a resistor between the digital uh, message there, and it just, you know, delays the transference of it back and loops in back into the circuit. It's a kind of a feedback mechanism they worked out there to, to do that glide. It's pretty interesting circuitry. Anyway, but, uh, yeah, it all seems to be doing its thing now, and... Oh, long job. I, I literally spent nine days working several hours. I don't know how many hours I put into this thing. It's one of the worst projects ever. Forever. Plug it in so you can at least listen to it a little bit. Here it is a very curious instrument. That's the noise it makes now when I turn it on with the uh, alternate regulators. I just put in 7800 series and don't ask me why. I don't want to know right now. <laughs> Actually, I do want to know, but I don't want to find out. So, let's see, I've got it um, cranked up with quite a bit of, uh, of uh, LFO on that one. If you turn up higher... start popping. I know it will. It was popping before. Maybe it's fixed now. I don't know. 
Well, we could hope it fixed itself somehow and me cleaning, shaking parts out of it. and <laughs> I just took it out and cleaned it out. Okay, maybe, <laughs> maybe it works now. I don't know. <laughs> That's uh, I get in the habit of doing that. My friend's always playing tribes, and let's see here. Okay, now I don't have any OSC one. If I turn off, then it gets that going. And um, oh, let me just lay this here. I'm lazy. I'm not gonna put on the whatever you're looking at right now is completely arbitrary. But you'll have fun listening anyway. I could put my tripod up, but. I could put it at least even so you don't think I'm in a bat cave or something. You're looking across the keys of a Prophet T8. Okay, <laughs> be okay seeing something good. <laughs> Something I got fixed there in my DS1 because the DS1 goes. Eh, 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 eh. It hasn't. You can hear an unevenness, which means there's probably a missing bit going on there. Uh, in the back because it was all offset to minus 12 and it was just killing it when I'd pull it to end because of that bad op amp. <laughs> does yet but <laughs> I mean in my mind I haven't gotten accustomed to its nuances yet <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
you a little sample of um, what these things will do. They really are cool sense if you can get them working. <laughs> uh, just the um, interplay of the two LFOs, you can do some really neat, uh, they both go in, that one goes to like 70 hertz and 40 hertz as I remember. I looked at them on my scope. Anyway, Bob Weigel Sound Doctrine uh, signing off and I hope I can figure out that last problem and I'm not here another week. We'll talk to you later.